I wanted to go back to basics in a video here because it's, it's answering a question that I have been getting a lot lately about why would I want to use Adobe Camera Raw, which also often gets referred to as ACR. Why would I want to use Adobe Camera Raw instead of Lightroom? Okay, or Lightroom over Adobe Camera Raw, or what's the advantage of using Adobe Camera Raw over Lightroom? That's been that's been the question I've been getting a lot lately. I have a theory as to why, and that's because Adobe's been introducing these beta technology preview features into Adobe Camera Raw. People are seeing that and seeing that they're not in Lightroom. So number one, there's a lot of conspiracy theories going on and, and don't read too far into it because there's not. This isn't some big giant scheme to try to get you to change from Lightroom or change anything. It very simply is, they're just beta features in one program that aren't in another program. But they are seeing these features and then the question does come up of, should I be using Camera Raw instead? All of these people, myself included, are showing all these great Camera Raw videos on how I can edit a photo and use all these features. Maybe I'm doing it the wrong way by using Lightroom. So I can cut to the chase and, and the answer and saying that it's not. If you're wondering what's the advantage of using one over the other, there there is none. Um, what's you know should I be using one over the other? It's really based on your workflow and and what you need for your photos. So so a very quick answer to this is they're the same. There's no advantage to one or the other. It's just to accommodate different photography workflows. But we'll talk a little bit more about the details um, and some of the things around it in the video here. Now the the first thing to to just understand about all this is that. When I look at a photo in Lightroom Classic and I've got all my edit controls over here, they are the same edit controls that I will see inside of Lightroom over here on the right hand side. Okay, Maybe name something a little bit differently, uh, might be in a slightly different location, but they are all the same and they all work the same and they look the same and they will produce identical results on the photo. And then if I were to open up one of those raw photos inside of Adobe Camera Raw, then of course, same thing. All of my edit controls over here are the same, okay? So first things first, there, there aren't really any differences between Lightroom Classic, Lightroom, or Adobe Camera Raw when it comes to the editing controls, the quality of those editing controls, the visual, uh, the visual changes that those edit controls are gonna create, there aren't any differences to that. Now, where I think some of the confusion has come from, where some people are, are now wondering, should I be using Adobe Camera Raw, is because there's this little gear icon in the top right-hand corner of Camera Raw. If you click on that, it's gonna open up a preferences window. At the bottom of that is technology previews. There's a little thing here, a little checkbox that you have to turn on. It is not on by default. So if it's on, you have turned it on. You've chosen to turn it on at some point. And People have seen a lot of videos lately about generative expand and reflection removal and some different denoise options and, and things along those lines. And so what happens with that is these read technology previews just change that out for beta. That, that's all it is. These are features that aren't necessarily ready for prime time. They've gotten far enough along the process where Adobe, I would say, Camera Raw is not the dominant place where most people are, most photographers are working on their raw photos. So if I were to guess, I'd say Camera Raw has almost become a playground at this point. But not in the sense that they're gonna release undocumented wonky features into it, because remember, you chose to turn this on. You turn this off, your Camera Raw is now the same as Lightroom, okay? They're, they're the same settings, the same everything. You turn this on, now you have access to a few different technology previews like generative expand, removing window reflections, and some things along those lines. Who knows what they'll add in the future? And as time goes on, what'll happen is once these features pass the test, whatever test that is, they'll most likely be added into the versions of Lightroom. Or if they don't pass the test, then they'll never get added into anything. But that would be, I, without any official word from Adobe that Camera Raw is the playground, that would be my guess, is Camera Raw is a little bit more of a playground because it's not as widely used by photographers as uh, either version of Lightroom really is, okay? So as to why would you or should you wanna use Camera Raw instead of Lightroom, there, don't ever, th that's actually the wrong question to ask. There's really no why should you or would you want to use it over that. It's a workflow thing, remember, Remember that, let's cancel out of, out of there. Remember, Adobe has a browser 
Uh, it's a photo browser, it's a file browser called Bridge. If you're in Photoshop, you can go to the file menu, browse and bridge. So Adobe's got that, that file browser, which is what I'm looking at right here. If I double click a raw photo, again, we're in the Photoshop world. This is Photoshop's file browser. This is what people use to look at photos who don't use Lightroom. This is Photoshop's file browser. If I were to double click a photo, let's actually cancel out of there. There we go. If I were to double click a photo, it opens up into Adobe Camera Raw, okay? That's Photoshop's raw editor, knowing that not everybody needs to or is using some version of Lightroom for their organization, okay? Or for their photo management and for their photo editing. So they give you Adobe Camera Raw. That's all. And the idea behind this is that I make my changes inside here, I click on open, and this opens it up into Photoshop. It's the same as if I were in Lightroom Classic, in this example, and I went to photo, edit in, Photoshop. It's the same thing. Really quick word from our sponsor, the fastest word from our sponsor you'll ever get. Uh, I did introduce Adobe Bridge uh, just a moment ago, and that, that might be a new tool for, for some of you. It's definitely not a required workflow, and hopefully this video it helped at least introduce you to whether or not you might want to look at it. I do have a little mini course on Adobe Bridge. So uh, if you're somebody where, you know, that piqued your curiosity and you're interested in learning a little bit more, uh, it's on sale, very, very small, easy to get through course, and it'll just bring you up to speed on what Adobe Bridge is and uh, how you could use it for your photography. So I hope you'll swing by the website to check it out. It's doing the same thing. So it's the same, it's just a different way to get there. That's, and that's really the main part about it. So when somebody sends me a, me and a message and asks, you know, what's the benefit of Camera Raw over Lightroom? There really is no necessarily benefit, okay? Lightroom is for people that want to use Lightroom, one version of it or another, to organize their photos and to do their edits. And essentially the way Lightroom works is, you know, you look at a photo, you go to develop and you're editing it. With the Bridge Camera Raw, version, there's a little bit of a disconnect there, right? You're, you're looking at your photos in one application and then you're double clicking them and going into another application to edit them. So it's not a, it's not a big change, but there is a little bit of a disconnect there and how that all works. It's not to say that this workflow doesn't work for a lot of people. And I would say, if you've got a photo or a group of photos or a folder, you're just not sure what's in it, or you, somebody has given you a photo, not everything, goes into a Lightroom library. Not everything should go into a Lightroom library. So Bridge and Camera Raw have a very viable place even to a Lightroom user. But again, not everybody has or needs Lightroom. And I think a lot of people use it that don't need it and it just complicates your workflow. For some people that shoot in a manner and shoot in a quantity, that makes it easy to go look at their photos in Bridge and just do some quick edits inside a Camera Raw like this. There's, there's nothing wrong with that workflow. Just know you're not gaining or losing anything. Okay, they're just, they're two different ways to do the same exact thing. And because I know that this question will come up, somebody will eventually ask, all right, well, can Camera Raw and Bridge and, and, and Lightroom all talk to each other? They're really not meant to, okay? And that's, that's one main thing that you need to come to grips with. So remember, when you're using Lightroom Classic and the way that it's meant to be used, your edits are stored in a catalog. So if I right click on this photo, I choose show and finder, show and explore, it's gonna show me where the photo is, all right? That's where the, that raw photo is located on my computer. Now, if I were to take this photo and open it up into Photoshop, if I just drag it over the Photoshop icon in the dock or you go file open in Photoshop and you, uh, you navigate to this folder and open this photo, it's gonna open up Adobe Camera Raw. Well, I, I don't see my Lightroom edits on this. And that's because those Lightroom edits are stored in the catalog with Lightroom, where Adobe Camera Raw, that's not seeing my Lightroom edits. So they are two different things, okay? And that's important to remember. So I can come in here and I can make some changes, add some color adjustments to it, whatever I wanna do here, but I can come in here and make some changes. Now the trick is if I were to click done or open, it's automatically going to write a little file next to it. It's called the sidecar file probably not seen it here. Let's see if I sort by name. There we go. It's called the sidecar file. And that sidecar file contains the instructions of what I did to it in Camera Raw. And the thing you need to watch out for is if you're going to try to use Lightroom and Camera Raw together, is that photos that might be in Lightroom and you've done something in Camera Raw, when I go back into Lightroom Classic, 
I'm eventually going to see this little exclamation point up there. And if I click on it, it's going to say the metadata has a conflict that was changed both by Lightroom and another application being Adobe Camera Raw. Should Lightroom import the settings from the disk, the disk is this right here. That's the settings from the disk. Okay, the hard drive, that's that little XMP file, which is what I did in Camera Raw. It's saying, should I import the settings from the disk or overwrite the settings with what it had from the Lightroom catalog? If I were to say, import the settings from the disk, this photo would revert to what I did in Adobe Camera Raw, okay? Because they're, they, they don't really talk to each other, but it is looking at that little sidecar XMP file as the instructions of what to do with the photo, or I can just choose overwrite the settings and just keep what I had in my Lightroom catalog, which is the photo that we're, uh, we're actually looking at right here. So it's just important to remember there is, is why, you know, I keep getting asked, why would I use Camera Raw instead of Lightroom? Or should I be using Camera Raw instead of Lightroom? Or what are the advantages? And, and the answer is quite simply, there's not and you shouldn't. There, there aren't any advantages and you, you shouldn't have to do that if your workflow doesn't call for it. It's just Adobe accommodating for different workflows, knowing not everybody that uses Photoshop is a photographer that came from Lightroom. Okay, you've got a lot of people that use Photoshop that want the same raw editing tools, though nobody doesn't want multiple raw editors that do different things and that have different looks and effects of settings. So it's just pushing all those into different places to account for different workflows. And my guess that you've been asking this question is just because you see a lot of camera raw videos lately because they've been pushing those technology or beta previews into there. Speaking of the technology previews, if you haven't seen the window reflection one in action, it is pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it making it over to Lightroom. But in the meantime, that's a great video to go watch next.